The ILO is one of the world's leading scientific infrastructures. We produce highly intense neutron beams to be used by scientists from all over the world to perform experiments at the ILO. We welcome every year more than 1,000 visitors to the ILO, performing more than 800 experiments in areas that are extremely varied, ranging from uh, fundamental physics uh, investigations that concern the origin of the universe, lots of materials investigations, touching all societal problems from energy, transport to health, and finally, biology. We are very proud of our in-house science in addition to the service we provide for our users. We also have uh, lots of career opportunities for uh, young scientists in order to either develop highly sophisticated instrumentation or to participate in cutting-edge uh, experiments. We also have a very extensive student program uh, for PhDs and trainees uh, trying to attract uh, from all over the world bright young people. Welcome to the strongest steady neutron source for research in the world, the high flux reactor of the Institut Laurie Langevin in Grenoble. We are standing here about 10 meters above the heavy water tank of our high flux reactor. And in this heavy water tank, the neutrons are produced, which we are using for our research. The fission neutrons are too fast and they have to be moderated in the heavy water tank. They can be further slowed down by using liquid cold moderators, deuterium in our case, where you go down to speeds below 700 meters per second. Those neutrons we call ultra cold neutrons, and they have the very nice property that they are bouncing from suited surfaces as a ping pong ball. They can store it in bottles made out of stainless steel, and then we can measure the basic properties and the fundamental properties of the neutron. What you see in the back is uh, an experiment which is one of the hot topics in uh, ultra cold neutron science at the moment. It's an uh, experiment to test gravity at short distances. Here neutrons are the ideal particle because they are neutral and only hardly polarizable. Furthermore, they build bound quantum states in the Earth's gravity field. These states have tiny energies of only pico electron volts but they have nearly a macroscopic size. If you could see neutrons by eye, you would actually see these states. This allows us to combine the powerful toolkit of quantum mechanics to gravity searches. And in this way, our colleagues from Vienna uh, want to set uh, limits on dark energy and dark matter models, and we try to test the weak equivalence principle. I'm leading the large-scale structures group at the ILL, a group that comprises small angle scattering machines, and neutron reflectometers, um, instruments for uh, looking at the structure of proteins. We have several programs to look at these structures with uh, neutrons. One of the advantages of the neutron scattering is that you can measure uh, energy exchange during the scattering event. Usually, this is made such a way that you measure the neutron velocity before and after the scattering. In 1972, Ferenc Mede invented a very uh, clever way of avoiding this problem by measuring directly the energy exchange during the scattering. What you see behind me is the first neutron spinnaco instrument which was constructed in 78. One of the main activities uh, of the group is to look at the structure of soft matter systems. Soft matter systems include polymers, surfactants, uh, liquid crystals, uh, gels, and we are able uh, here to uh, determine uh, their structure uh, at a detail of the fraction of nanometer. This is our latest improvement on spinnaco spectroscopy. It can collect uh, intensity on a very large angular range and uh, normally we expect the experiment to go much faster. Should be completed by end of next year and we will see the results. We are very much specialized in uh, looking at membrane systems, so we mimic 
cell membranes with uh, lipid bilayers. Lipids are the main constituents of membranes. And we have developed a, a large number of techniques for uh, uh, making the appropriate samples that can be looked then with neutron techniques. This is the recently upgraded, most recent version of this pinnacle spectrometer. It has four times better resolution, ten times higher intensity, so we really can see very slow motion in uh, magnetic materials, in soft matter, in biological materials. I'm working in uh, quantum magnetism, so I'm looking at insulators where individual atoms carry a magnetic moment, like a little compass needle, a little bit, you can imagine it like here. Sometimes they interact only in one dimension and they uh, form spin chains like that. And I'm looking at the excitations. They're simple excitations, which are just like wobblings of the spin like that. We call them spin waves. And they're more complicated ones where, where they all twist, which then are more interesting topological excitations, we, we call them. And some of them have been predicted by the last year's Nobel Prize. Duncan Haldane, who was also employed at the ILL at the time when he did this discovery, we can investigate extremely small samples here at the ILL because we have very high flux. So we can investigate with polarized neutrons uh, uh, samples uh, down to the size of 0 0.01 millimeter cube. So that's something one can do only at the ILL and it was even here, it was thought impossible until recently. The machine I work on is called RADI. It's a Rowie diffractometer. And what we do with this is we use crystals of biological molecules and we fire a beam of neutrons at the crystal and the crystal hopefully diffracts. We, we have a pattern like this sort of pattern here. From that pattern we can work out the structure of the protein in three dimensions, the coordinates of all the atoms. The advantage with neutrons is we can see the hydrogen atoms in the structure and these are really important because most of the chemistry done by bi biological molecules is performed by the hydrogen atoms. We can locate the positions of the hydrogens, we can see how they move in order to understand the chemistry within the molecules. So an example would be the HIV-1 protease project. This is a protein that's involved in the life cycle of the HIV virus and we're interested in understanding how the drugs bind to this protein. The idea behind that is that this protein is essential for the virus and so by blocking its, its function we stop the virus from becoming mature and infectious. Our success is based in large parts on a continuous modernization program. Uh, our service-oriented uh, business model obliges us to adapt continuously to the changing trends in science. And this adaptation is made possible by investing continuously uh, on one hand on the reliability of our neutron source and on the other hand into the modernization of our instruments.